Thank you for the lovely introduction. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be um, uh, facilitating the first of the working sessions here today, um, and I'm very happy to be uh, to be joined here for this session. If my guests would like to make their way up. We have uh, Ivor Bourne from uh, Integra Sports Partners, uh, Jess Shanahan from Racing Mentor, and uh, racing driver Charlie Martin. Give them a round of applause. So we're each going to be making a short presentation and then I'm going to be opening the floor up to, uh, to any questions so you're going to be able to, to pick our respective brains. Before we start though, I'm interested to get a bit of a view of who we've got here with us. Have we got any people who are actively racing at the moment? Hands in the air, yep. So we've got a few drivers. Anybody who's looking to start racing? Yep. Any people from, from teams or championships? So a fairly, fairly broad spectrum. Well, it's good to, have you, uh, good to have you all here with us. Um, for this first working session, as you could know, no, it's gone from the screen, but we're going to be focusing on sponsorship and, uh, and media engagement. So um, obviously the media side of it is a, is a topic that's pretty close to my heart. Jake's just given you a little bit of information about what I do, but I actually started out as a press officer. Um, Karun was talking about Eddie Jordan. I had the joy stroke, well, call it what you will, of being Eddie Jordan's press officer when the Formula One team were, were based over the road, then moved into, into Formula One and, and now uh, hosting the British Touring Car Championship with ITV. Um, Jess Shanahan is a, is a journalist as well, but she also has another string to her bow um, because she's the founder of Racing Mentor. Uh, Jess set up Racing Mentor to, to coach racing drivers and teams in, in key business skills and to help them build their profiles and, and secure sponsorship. Um, she's just launched a new book, or in fact, it's, it's sort of launched launching here uh, over the course of the weekend at uh, Motorsport Days Live, a new book called uh, Get Paid to Race, um, which I'm sure will uh, help racing drivers um, land some big sponsorship deals. Um, and uh, she's going to be telling us a little bit more about that uh, in her presentation. Um, Charlie Martin is a racing driver who's working towards competing at Le Mans. Um, en route to that, she has raced in a whole host of cars, ranging from hot hatches to, to single seaters and prototypes. Um, Charlie has a degree, in, a degree in graphic design, and that really helped her to build um, an online presence as a, as a vlogger um, with 1.6 million views on uh, YouTube, which I'm sure you'll agree is a pretty enviable uh, number. Um, and that's really helped her increase her exposure and visibility as a, as a driver and to establish a, a strong brand ID as well. Um, but our first presentation is going to come from Ivor Bourne. Ivor describes himself as an ordinary guy in a complex world, but living an extraordinary life. Um, he actually started work as uh, wanting to be a TV repairman for, for Ready Fusion. Um, some of you in the audience probably haven't got a clue what I'm talking about when I mention Ready Fusion, but the older ones amongst you will, uh, will remember the days when, uh, when you rented a TV. Um, and then uh, Ive has gone on to do a variety of jobs before landing up in motorsport. He spent two years working with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg at Mercedes, helping to drive the team um, to world championship success in 2014. And he now heads up Integra Sports Partners, um, which takes a, a really integrated approach when it comes to, uh, to racing drivers. They don't just manage them, they, they mentor and educate them as well. So to tell us a little bit more about it, Ivor, over to you. Thank you, Louise, and good morning, everybody. It's uh, good to see you. I'm glad you've come along uh, to join us. A lot of people try to categorize what I do as a business to say I'm either a management company or a mentor or a, a sponsorship company. I'm actually neither of those, and that's really quite strange, so it makes you wonder why I'm here. Basically, when I came up with the idea, I wanted to be a catalyst for change in sport in general. Not just motorsport, but all sports across the board. So ultimately, what I looked at from my experiences in F1 were the small details that are often missed by those that want to have a career in sport. Uh, I'll deal mainly with motorsport, because that's what we're here for, and understanding what it is that those at the very top do to make themselves successful champions. Like Louisa said, I was very fortunate to work with the likes of Schumacher and Lewis and, and Nico Rosberg, Ross Braun, Nicky Lauder, all those people, all great. And they all had interesting attributes about them that make them stand out, that make them multiple world champions. So what I did in my tenure at 
Mercedes AMG F1, was absorbed, took in everything that these people gave me. And it gave me a foundation, having won the world championship, to determine how I was going to progress Integra Sports Partners. And I built it on TIC. It's an acronym on trust, integrity, confidentiality, and knowledge. Now, these are all the key elements that a lot of these top professionals work on. If we take trust, for example, in the team, they allow you implicitly to do your job to the best of your ability. You are no one individual, you are part of a massive organization, but they are trusting you with making sure that your element works. On the driver's side, they lack trust. Their circle of trust becomes far, far smaller. And so to build that trust, you have to build relationships with those individuals. And in so doing, you then become to un you understand what it takes to be integral, have integrity within that team. And finally, you have that, that confidentiality, that, that ability to, for them to believe in you and to know that you're not going to say anything that shouldn't be misplaced, put out there, that will make you look bad in any kind of light. Knowledge, very simple. What you learn from anybody at any age is important. Now, I've done a lot of things over a long period of time, believe it or not. And I've used every experience to put me where I am now, to be able to speak to the likes of yourselves that have an interest, have an ability, have an art. Can I just quickly ask, how many of you here have won anything? It's just, just, just a general question. Yeah, that's cool, don't be shy. Because I'll tell you now, everybody in this room is a winner. Because to get to where we are through conception has made you, you won that race. So we're all winners. Yeah, see, I understand, okay? So, so yeah, so that wasn't a trick question, it's just to get you understanding. Now what has changed over that time is that belief in your ability to do what you do be it the circumstances, situations you're in, the people around you have eroded that belief that you're a winner. So ultimately what I do with Integra Sports Partners is rebuild that belief. And I have another acronym that I use, the ISP MME, Integra Sports Partners, Management, Mentoring and Education. I don't manage the individual. I don't say, right, you're my driver, or you're my footballer, you're my golfer, let's go and make some money. I manage your expectation, what it is that you'll need to do to be the best. I won't say, yes, you're going to make it happen. I will say, this is how we can do this together. I'll mentor your ability. If I understand how you are as a person, I'll know what works best for how you can grow in your chosen field of what it is that you want to do, what you want to achieve. And education, whether you're a youngster at school, whether you're a, an older person that is still racing and wants to race and wants to build a career, never stop learning. You, we can learn from, I've learned from everybody, young and old, you know, as a young racer. In this environment, in motorsport, you need to have a plan B. Because, you know, let's be perfectly honest, this is a very, very difficult industry. You know, I can say, yeah, I'll show you how to get your sponsors. I'll show you how to use social media. I'll show you. I don't need to. We have experts for that. What I do is facilitate access to the best experts because what I have done is built trust. Coming back to my original point of building trust and integrity. I built trust with people that I know that if I suggested if you go to person A or person B, they will give you the advice that you are looking for. So ultimately, that is what ISP is. So I'd like to build, in an ideal world, an organization of champions. And for me, a champion isn't someone that has a championship or a trophy or a race win. 
A champion is someone that can change the mindset, that can leave a legacy, that's something that's memorable. And you can do that without winning. You can do that by being the right kind of person, the right individual to make that happen. So hopefully, now that I've said all of that, you'll have questions to ask me how I make that happen, what I do, and I'll probably say I'm not quite sure because I don't know you. However, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great morning, great afternoon, and I'll hand you back to Louise. Thank you, Thank you very much, Ives. That's some, some very interesting insights there, and I'm sure it will be the same um, from our, our second presenter. So please uh, welcome Jess Shanahan. Hello, everyone. I am Jess, and I run Racing Mentor. I help drivers build their profile and secure sponsorship so they can climb up the ranks within motorsport. I actually started my career in marketing and PR, but I soon realized that the skills I had in that arena was well suited to doing something that I really loved, so it made sense to make the step into motorsport. So I've worked with all sorts of drivers and teams over the years, but probably one of the things that I'm most proud of is the Porsche team that I ran in 2016 under my automotive brand, Turn 8 Racing. We took this beautiful 924 that you can see here and we wrapped it in blue and pink with the view that we were gonna make it a real presence within the paddock. And as a team, we secured all sorts of sponsorship, media coverage, and we started to build that profile. And all of it was building to a really special hospitality event at the end of the season where we um, hosted our guests, partners, sponsors, and a few other drivers as well. And we were told how professional we were and what a good presence we had in the paddock with all our sponsors um, and guests around us. People kept asking me at that point if I could help them find sponsorship. And I realized that the things drivers struggle with, I've been doing for years within marketing and PR. So I wanted to help these drivers, and I gave out loads of sponsorship advice. I helped a number of drivers um, secure partners. But I couldn't help everyone. So I knew that I needed to create something that could reach as many people as possible to help them get on track and stay there. And that's how Racing Mentor was born. And although I no longer run a race team, I really miss it. So I have plans for getting some more cars on track in 2020 and perhaps next year as well. Over the last couple of years, I've been working with drivers, teams, motorsport businesses, basically anyone who wants to secure a stronger foothold in this wonderful sport. And I do that through coaching, online courses, and a, a whole host of free content on racingmentor.com and my social channels. And very excitingly, as Louise mentioned, I'm launching a book today. Get Pay to Race teaches you how to build your profile, find potential sponsors, and land those deals. And I'm telling you this because, firstly, I think some of you will find it really helpful, whether you need to build your brand if you're just starting out and need to secure that sponsorship, or you're ready to kind of take things to the next level. But I'm also mentioning it as a proof of concept of what I do and um, how I go about searching for sponsorship because everything that I talk about in the book, I use to land sponsors who helped me get, get paid to race in front of you today. And to give you some context without giving away exact figures, because I don't think my sponsors would be too happy with that, it took me around three months to land low five figures to help me get the book in front of everyone. So I'd like to thank Mark Brunel Recruitment, Trade Price Cars Racing, and Superpass for that. And I also want to end on a piece of advice because we're obviously all here to learn. So I want racing drivers to start thinking beyond a sticker on a car. You need to show a business exactly why they would benefit from working with you. So if that's with regards to a sticker, why does a business want that and why are you the one to provide it? A lot of drivers seem to start their email pitches with a paragraph about themselves. 
And while it's important that businesses know who you are, it's probably not the most important thing. The most important thing is what you can do for that business. So if you can instantly hook a business owner with what you can do, your numbers, and why you're impressive, then your full bio and what you race is going to be all the more relevant. I'm really excited to help racing drivers get on track and get the funding to drive their dream race cars, of which there are obviously many here this weekend. Um, so please feel free to ask me anything about sponsorship or the branding, social media, and events that it helps uh, that will get you there. Um, if you want to have a longer chat with me, I'm in Hall 1 on Stand 59. I'm more than happy to chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jess. Um, so now my little chat. I mentioned earlier on we were talking about uh, my, my television work. The other string to my bow is that I run my own media training company. So for the past 10 years, I've been running uh, media training sessions with everybody from, from young carters right up to some of the Formula One drivers and, and Formula One team personnel, um, helping to in, improve their, their media skills. And so today I'm going to talk to you about um, how you can in, increase your media engagement and, and make your contact with the press and, and with the public as well a, a sort of more worthwhile and productive experience. But first of all, um, let's have a think about why it all matters. Why do the media actually matter in the first place? Well, if any of you out there are thinking of making a career out of motorsport, a career as a racing driver, then the media absolutely matter to you. Um, in this day and age, you know, being quick is not good enough. You've got to be able to, to work well with the press and, and have a good relationship with the media as well. And the higher you get up the racing ladder, the more important that becomes. Because as a racing driver, you are the, the spokesperson for the team um, and for the team sponsors as well. So it's really important that you're presenting them and yourself as well in the best possible light in the media. And obviously, as you go up the ladder, the more media exposure there's likely to be for your championship. Well, you might say to me, well, actually, I'm not going to be a professional racing driver. I, I'm just out there to, to have fun and enjoy myself. But it's, the media is still important to you because unless you happen to be absolutely loaded, as we're all too well aware, um, motorsport is an expensive business. So chances are you're going to need some sponsorship to, to fund your fun. And your sponsors are going to want some, some brand awareness. They're going to want some exposure for the money that they're, they're putting into, into your career. And let's not forget about the fans either, the people who pay the money to come to the racetracks who, at the end of the day, support us all. They are the people who are going to be sitting there listening to the commentators, providing the commentary on the races. And you want to make sure that those commentators are firstly talking about you, and, and secondly, talking about you in a way that you want to be promoted with the image that you want to come across. So, so for all racing drivers, for teams, for, for championship organizers, the media are important. Having a good relationship with the media is important. So how do you go about getting media exposure? Well, First of all, you need to have a good story. I don't just come along to interview racing drivers out of, out of the goodness of my heart. I'm talking to them because I want to hear their story. So in many cases, the story is that they've, they've won a race or, or they've crashed out of a race. Um, but it doesn't have to be totally racing related. You know, if you've got um, a, a story could be that, uh, you know, you've, you've just got married, you've just got 10 A's in, in your GCSEs. All sorts of different things can make a story. But at the end of the day, you absolutely have to have a story. Um, you can't expect the media to come and talk to you just because you've finished 10th in a race. But if you finish 10th in a race because you were in the fight for the win and then spun out on the final lap, that's a story. So you've got a story to give to me. Similarly, if you finish 10th, despite the fact that you started way down at the back of the grid, you've overtaken 20 cars to get into that position, that's, that's a story. So fundamentally, you've got to have a story to communicate to the media. Then, of course, you need to actually communicate that story. You need to tell us your story. How many of you out there both know and would have a conversation on a regular basis with the commentators that, that cover your championship? A couple of people. And how many of you out there have contact with your local press as well? Your local radio, your local, yep. Same three people. Good to see that, that you're all being proactive. Um, you've got to 
it's important to start building relationships with the, with the journalists that, that cover your series. You know, you don't, be having, don't have to be giving them a sort of banner headline every time. Just, just stop and have a chat with them. You'd be amazed how much coverage that can bring you. I was having a conversation about this recently with, um, with Richard John Neal, who's the commentator um, for the Ginetta Junior and Ginetta Super Cup Championships on the, on the touring car bill. And Richard was telling me that a few of the drivers recently had been complaining to him about how much coverage he was giving to one particular driver who was racing in the Super Cup. And it wasn't a driver who was, you know, racing for the, for the wins the whole time. But as Richard pointed out to them, that was because this particular driver made a point every race weekend. He'd come and find Richard. He'd have a chat with him. He'd tell him what he'd been up to. He'd tell him what he was going to do. He introduced him to his friends and his family. They told Richard more stories about him. So Richard had lots of information that he could communicate. It's a very simple thing to do. Make sure you have conversations with, with the commentators covering your championships and also with the reporters covering your championships as well. Um, and it doesn't just have to be at the track. Get in contact, as some of you are already doing, with your, with your local media, with your local radio station, with your local newspaper. In this day and age, budgets are constrained. Not all publications have the money to fund journalists to go out and find the story the whole time. So if you're bringing things to them, you're increasing your chances of getting some media exposure for yourself. You've got to make sure it's the right kind of thing that you're bringing to them. There's, there's no point in bombarding um, local press with, with press releases giving a, a lap by lap account of your racing. They, they probably won't have the time or the inclination to, to wade their way through it. And it's not necessarily, you've got to make it relevant to their audience as well. But if you've, you know, if you've had a string of good results, let them know about it. Um, if you've had a huge accident, you know, walked away unscathed from a 100 mile an hour smash, let them know about that as well. That's gonna be an interesting story um, for, your, for your local media. And it doesn't even have to be results-based. Be creative as well. You know, we've got children in need coming up in a couple of weeks. Take your cart or your car to, to school or to, you know, a local shopping center. Charge people a couple of quid to have their photo taken in it and then let the media know about it. That's a story that's around at the moment. A lot of people are talking about children in need. So if you do that, let your local press know about it. That's going to be the kind of story that they're going to be interested in covering. So you've got to get out there. You've got to be proactive. You've got to have a story and then you've got to communicate that story as well. Uh, getting attention, it can be difficult. I mean, obviously, there are lots of sports people out there uh, trying to do the same thing. But, but if you're not making the effort, you can't expect to, to necessarily be, be getting the reward for it. So one final area I wanted to talk about was, was social media. Um, Karim was talking about this earlier on, touching on the, the potential downsides of social media, but there are lots of upsides as well. Social media is a, is a very powerful tool for, for communicating with people. Um, it's, it's obviously, it's totally free. Um, but the other benefit is, is that it, it enables you to put yourself out there in, in front of the press, in front of the public, in front of you know, sponsors and potential sponsors, being promoting yourself in the way that you want to be promoted, rather than that happening through a medium like me as a, me as a journalist. So the control is entirely in your own hands when you're using social media. Um, but you need to think about how you're using it. I mean, those are the top 10 social media sites in the UK at the moment in order of usage. So Facebook is by, by far the most popular, um, followed by Twitter. YouTube is the third most popular social media site uh, in, in the UK at the moment. So you do need to think about how you're using the social media because it, they will appeal to different types of people. So so, so Facebook tends to be, um, it's a sort of, um, you know, it's a communication from an entertainment perspective and, and can be from an information perspective as well. So it ticks all sorts of boxes. Um, Twitter has become more of a kind of business tool in these days. And, and obviously LinkedIn is very much directed uh, towards business. And different types of social media will appeal to a different demographic as well. So all you youngsters out there will probably know that you know since since the parent generation have started using facebook woof you're off it you're uh, you're all using instagram instead so you need to think about um, who you're trying to attract when you're when you're using your social media um, and you need to have a social media strategy it's no good just having a scattergun effect and and throwing things out there so think about what are you trying to achieve are you just trying to in increase awareness um, then probably you would use some, some more of the, of the social sites. If you're trying to find sponsorship, attract sponsorship, then, you know, go to a business form of social media. 
you need to think about where are the people that I want to get contact with? Where are they likely to be, to be hanging out? So find your social media and then target them um, directly in a way that's going to be relevant to them. So I will leave it there because we now have somebody who is a perfect example of, uh, of using social media very productively um, because that's exactly what, uh, what Charlie has done, as I've made reference in my brief introduction earlier on, um, has used her, her graphic design background and her social media skills to, to really further her racing career. So without further ado, let's hear from Charlie. Hi, good morning, everyone. So I'd like to start briefly by talking a bit about how I got some of my experience. Um, as Louise rightly said, I studied graphic design, which was uh, a huge benefit to me. And uh, just in terms of things like being able to do my own website, my own logo, um, obviously video, which is a huge thing, and even down to designing liveries for cars I've raced, or even customer cars as well, which is something that's a separate passion of mine. Um, it's also something that saved me a lot of money as well, just through being able to do this myself. So in 2015, I went off to race in France for the first time, and a lot of my friends said, why don't you start a blog? Because it'd be a great way for us to all be able to follow what you're getting up to, what you're doing. I'd never done anything like this before, but I set up a blog on Google Blogger. It was a completely free thing to do. And it all kind of started there, really. I got really into it. It grew quite quickly. And I ended up writing for Piston Heads, which was a fantastic way to get onto a much bigger platform and reach a really broader group of people. Because I was racing in France, but looking for sponsorship in England, I quickly realized that there was a real need to have a bigger digital footprint, because fundamentally, the, the companies I was going to you know, needed to see that I could reach a, a big audience in the UK. So I really put a lot of time and effort into trying to build my, uh, build my online profile. And part of this was starting my GoCharlie brand and um, really coming up with the idea of having a brand identity, something that was core to me. And this led to all kinds of things like making television programs for Motors TV and it's, uh, yeah, it's all kind of developed from there, really. So I just want to ask some questions that fundamentally I think any driver should be asking themselves when they go out looking for sponsorship. Firstly, why should you be thinking of yourself as a brand? Well, it goes without saying, you know, as a driver, you want to stand out. You want to be noticed. And by doing this, it's an obvious advantage in terms of sponsorship. What is a brand? Well... It's something that's instantly recognizable as you, something that's unique to you, that defines you. Um, for me, I came up with the idea of Go Charlie quite simply because my name, Charlie Martin, isn't particularly memorable. I just wanted something that was a bit punchy, that, that instantly rememberable, and also that's easy to search for on Google. If you put Go Charlie in, straight away it comes up with a lot of things that relate to me. Um, I think a key thing you need to be doing as well is looking for ways to reach people outside of your initial sphere, you know, reaching a broader audience. I think a lot of drivers, while you have to be focused on what you're doing on track and your driving and everything else, a lot of drivers can fall into a trap of perhaps being a bit one-dimensional. And it's really important to think about things you can do outside of your sport. Um, you know, from a sponsorship angle, I think this is so important. If you can reach a demographic outside of motorsport, suddenly you've got access to things that other drivers can't do. And it makes you very unique. It gives you a, a unique value proposition that other drivers cannot tap into. So it's all really, as well, thinking about things you can do to extend your reach. You know, do you have any interesting hobbies? As Louise said, do you have an interesting story that you can, a backstory that you can play on that makes you stand out? How big is your digital footprint? You know, what are people seeing when they search for you online? Is it something from two weeks ago? Is it something from a year ago that's no longer even relevant to what you're racing in now? And is there something you can do that's, you know, that's unique to you that no one else is doing? Uh, I think Nicky Team is a really good example of this with his sim racing that he does online. Um, 
he, you know, this is something that's quite unique to him as a driver, and it's also a really good opportunity for him to showcase his personality. Uh, he's a really funny guy, and I think I follow him more than any other driver just purely because I find him really funny and his content's interesting to watch. I think as well, thinking if you have a message you want to communicate, do you have something like a cause or something that's personal to you that, that, really, uh, that you really want to communicate? And how can you engage that? Sure, you can do it through social media, but also can you get onto TV or get onto podcasts, really thinking how you can, how you can extend that message? Um, for me, <clears throat> uh, a key thing that I did was getting onto Ninja Warrior. Now, it's you know, nothing to do with racing, but it's a prime time show on Saturday night. It goes out to five million viewers. And it was an amazing uh, experience for me to get in front of a much broader audience. People perhaps who had no interest in motorsport who discovered me for the first time. They came and filmed a VT on me, which got amazing exposure for NGK and all my sponsors. And uh, it just, something like that, just thinking outside of the box and going off at a bit of a tangent can really make a big difference and, and open you up to, to other sponsors. For me, it really helps to show me as an athlete as well, which then can open, open other doors. So as well, I just want to really briefly talk about vlogging. It's such an important tool. I think video as a form of communication and a way of building a, follow, a, a following it is so critical these days. It's, it's an opportunity to showcase your personality, who you are, and you know, your sense of humor, what makes you tick. Ultimately, people like people. I, I think if there's one thing I've really learned from building a brand, it's the fact that this is the biggest thing that people buy into and will keep people following you and coming back repeatedly to look at your content. It's, you know, we, we're really struggling these days with the amount of information we come across online that attention spans are so short. And if you can produce 60 to 60 second to 120 second videos that just show you, show you doing what you love, that put across your personality, it's something that's free as well. I mean, vlogging is not an expensive thing to do. Sure, you could be paying someone to do it, but I'm gonna show you a video in a second that I made. I made it on my, with my camera phone. I bought a piece of music off Audio Network, which cost me 10 pounds. I wrote a script. And you know, away you go. You, straight away, you've got something that, that can really capture a moment. This particular video I made for BBC Three, and it went out on, um, on New Year's Day this year. And it, again, it just, just highlights how you can do something quite simple that really puts you in front of a much bigger demographic. And suddenly, these people are discovering you uh, from a sponsorship point of view. I think that's what sponsors want to see. It's like, what's your reach? How many people can you access? A lot of it's numbers and engagement. So uh, I'm just going to show you this video. And um, I just realized I'm wearing exactly the same clothes as in the video. So I do actually have another outfit. So. I came to the more purely experience, no expectation. Even just the walk into the gallery, I came to the gallery, I felt so surreal. I can't believe it's a third place. To be on the podium here, my first ever video in Texas is just such an incredible feeling. We all have things that we can do. Very much, uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Um, now, I know I promised you all a Q&A session, but I'm mindful of the fact there's a little sign down here saying time is up. Um, and there are other, other speakers who are, who are going to come on next, so we don't want to delay that. But I'm sure everybody who is here would be more than, um, more than happy to, to have a chat with you. So if you'd like to pick Charlie's brains about what she's done or talk to Ivor about his area of expertise, um, then 
They'll, they'll hang around for a bit. Um, Jess and I both have stands, so you can see Jess's stand. We're both in the far hall, so if you'd like to talk to Jess about, about sponsorship and, and get a copy of her new book, um, you'll find her there. I'm going to be giving some uh, little free media training sessions on, on my stand, which is the media stand in, in the far hall. So um, thank you to all of our speakers, um, and thanks to all of you for coming along. Enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. Thank you.